Hi everyone and welcome. Today we are starting to test scalping strategies. I know many of you have been requesting this lately and I must admit I usually avoid low time frames and scalping because I find this a risky approach and mostly nervously draining. But when it comes to algorithmic methods, things might be easier in the sense that we can test our strategy and know exactly what kind of outcome we can expect. So hopefully there will be no ugly surprises since our model is already backtested. As usual, the Python code is available for download from the link in the description of the video if you are interested in the coding part. If not, you may just enjoy the video and check with us what kind of results our strategy might give. So as a start, I chose something relatively simple. We will be using three exponential moving averages. One is fast, the other one is medium, and the third one is slow. And we're going to use these moving averages to detect our trend. When these are aligned within a certain order, like fast above medium above slow moving average, then we have an uptrend and the opposite order indicates a downtrend. Now, just to make sure of the trends, I also added one more condition. It's that the slopes of these curves should be pointing in the same direction. So we are talking about an uptrend when the three curves have positive slopes. And in the case of a downtrend, the slopes of the three curves should be negative, meaning pointing downwards. And when we have a clear trend signal, we will look for our entry point. So when the price makes a movement through the fast moving average, like here in this example, and we are looking for a buying position, we have a candle that opens below the fast moving average and closes above this curve, which signals the continuation of the uptrend. And this will be our entry point, which in this example is our buying position. The interest here is that we can code all of this in Python and backtest this strategy at first without much optimization. Since I would like to keep this video short, but I will make another video trying to optimize our parameters and see if we can manage our trades in a winning combination. Okay, now let's see how to write all of this in Python and what the backtesting results are showing. Okay, so this is our Jupyter Notebook file. I'm using the Euro US dollar currencies. 15 minutes candlesticks between 2019 up to 2022. So this means we have data for almost three years. Of course, if you want to test uh, further the strategy, you may as well download more data like uh, for six years and so on. But on the Decascopy website, when you download minutes, candlesticks you are limited to uh, a maximum of three years so you would have to download these in batches of three years and concatenate your data frames accordingly anyway for what we are doing here i think um, three years are enough so we have our data frame we have uh, 105,000 rows in our data frame remember that each row represents a candlestick which is 15 minutes candle and i'm cleaning uh, the data frame from volumes equal to zero so which means these are candles during the weekends and days off so we have no market movements and we have no interests in such data and at this point we can import pandas underscore technical analysis uh, module and compute the three different moving averages i'm calling these ema 50 100 and 150 and i'm using the length for um, the first one which is the fast moving average length equal 50 then length equal 100 and 150 for the slow moving average and as i have described at the beginning in the algorithm section i'm also adding the slopes of the moving averages and this is done in this cell here i put this into a parameter called backrolling n which is equal to 10 by default which means we are taking the moving average for 10 different candles to compute the slope so all of this to, just to tell you that this is one parameter that we can also work on for our strategy in other words here if i'm taking 10 it means that I'm computing the average slope for the moving average of the last 10 candles. So this parameter will determine for how long I would like my trend to be established already before considering that I have an uptrend or a downtrend. So now our data frame would look like this. We have the open price, the high, low, close price, the volume, the three different moving averages and the slopes of the three different moving averages we can notice the magnitude and the values of these slopes that are computed according to the index and not according to the time 
of the trade. Okay, so now at this stage we can check our conditions and we can say that if we have the fast moving average is below the uh, medium moving average and the medium moving average is also below the slow moving average, then we have the alignment showing um, downtrend. On top of that, we would like that the slopes of the three moving averages would be negative. So I'm adding the conditions, the F slope EMA 50 is negative and the F slope EMA 100 is negative as well as slope EMA 150 is also negative. And for the opposite trend direction, we have the fast moving average is above the 100 moving average, which is the medium moving average, and the medium moving average is above the slow moving average. This set of conditions would show an uptrend, and at the same time, we would like that the slopes of the three curves of the moving averages would be positive, and these are set in these conditions right here. So now that we have our two sets of conditions, the choices or the results of these conditions would be either one or two. One would indicate a downtrend and two would indicate an uptrend. And I'm assigning these using the uh, NumPy module into a column in our data frame that I called the exponential moving average signal. And by default, the value of the signal is equal to zero, which means that if these conditions are not met or any of these conditions is not met then we will have a signal that is equal to zero meaning that we don't know the trend is it an uptrend or a downtrend so this would be our exponential moving average signal that is one additional column that we have added into our data frame but that's not all we still have one more signal to execute buying or selling positions we have to look for the candles that are opening and closing crossing the fast moving average curve so we're going to create a list called total signal at first it's equal to zero which has the same length of the data frame and for each row in our data frame we're going to check if we have an exponential moving average signal that is equal to one indicating a selling signal and at the same time we have the opening price of the current candle above the ema 50 of the current candle and the closing price is below the EMA 50 of the current candle or the current row, in which case we have a candle that is opening above the um, fast moving average and closing below the fast moving average. And this will be our entry point and our total signal is going to be equal to one in this case. The opposite condition is when we have an EMA signal equal to 2 indicating an uptrend. We're going to look for a candle that opens below the fast moving average and that closes above the fast moving average. In which case we have a total signal that is equal to 2 indicating a buying signal and an entry point. So all of this is assigned into a, a list and then the list is added as a column to our data frame. And the title I put here is total signal. And our data frame at this stage would look like this. We have the opening high, low, close price, the volume column, the three moving averages, the three slopes of the moving averages, the signal of the moving averages indicating the trend if it's an uptrend and a downtrend, and the total signal indicating our entry points. To better see our signals, we can visualize those on our charts. So I'm going to define a new function called points positions. If the total signal at a certain candle is equal to one, which means we have a selling signal, I'm going to plot a point that is above the candle. And otherwise, if we have a buying signal, we're going to plot a point below the candle. Otherwise, we don't have to include anything. We're not plotting anything. And I'm going to add this into a column into our data frame. These are the points positions of the signals. I'm going to plot all of these between let's say a candle 100 and candle 2350 and this is our charts we have the three moving averages and we have the purple points showing our selling and buying signals so maybe it's better to zoom in and take a smaller time let's say from 2000 up to 2350 it makes a total of 350 bars and here we have a downtrend because we have a certain alignment. The slopes of the moving averages are negative and we are looking for a crossing, a candle that crosses the fast moving average from up 
to down which will indicate a selling signal and here are our selling signals that are detected by our system as you can see these are perfect signals because if we take these signals as selling signals they are followed by a drop uh, in the price remember that the drop doesn't have to be a big drop because we are somehow trying to scalp here so our take profit is close enough to our selling position however this signal here are false signals we have the conditions are met alignment of the three moving averages in the same direction we have negative slopes at this point but we don't have a drop in the price afterwards we have a small rise in the price and probably in this case we are touching our stop loss before hitting this big drop here at the end of uh, of this graph so as you can see the signaling is working properly there are no weird signals on this graph this is the system we have built just as a remark here notice that we will be opening one trade at once so these four signals are going to be executed as one single signal it means that once we have a cell position that is opened we will not allow another position to be opened in parallel okay so now we can try to backtest this strategy we are uh, defining our signal which is the total signal then i'm importing the backtesting.py package and i'm defining the my strategy class that inherits from the strategy class of the uh, backtesting package my starting size of a lot is 0 0.3 which means it's 30 percent of my equity now it's a bit too much but if you are trying to scalp with 50 dollars or 100 dollars it's acceptable to go i mean in the worst case you would have lost 50 dollars it's not much so we're not talking about big sums here we would like to scalp with small sums because this would allow us to um, increase our profits and have faster improvement of our equity so i'm going for 30 percent and i'm going to skip this part which is related to the martingale which we are not going to use in this video nor for this strategy especially when we are using 30 percent of our equity so if we have a signal that is equal to two it's a buying signal and an entry point and at the same time the length of our currently open trades is zero which means we have no opened trades so we would have only one trade at once the stop loss and take profits are taken with reference to the closing price of the current candle we're going to take 40 pips and 40 pips also for the take profit so they are at the same distance from our position price then i'm going to buy execute a buying position taking into account the stop loss the take profit and the size of the lot same thing for the selling signal in which case we are taking the same distances for stop loss and take profit and the same lot size for the back testing i'm taking a margin of one over 100 so i'm considering a leverage to improve the um, returns of our strategy since i'm only considering 100 dollars in cash as a starting uh, account value and these are the results we have 30 percent return so it's not that bad we have a winning rate of 66.6 percent so it's also uh, relatively good and we can try to test this strategy for a longer period because remember we simply took um, 350 candles here so let's say we are going for a thousand candles up to 2350 rows i'm going to re-execute these signals so here we have 20 percent in returns it's also a winning strategy so far i'm going to try it for a different period of time let's say we're going for um, between 10,000 up to uh, 12,350 these are the indexes of the rows of the candles so i'm going to execute the back test one more time and here we have a return of minus 14 percent so i think there is some potential here with this strategy because it's showing positive returns in uh, many cases but also you have some periods where you would have negative returns just remember that we took a very simple strategy we are simply using three moving averages and looking at the candles when they are crossing the fast moving average so there was no confirmation from a different signal in this case i think there might be a lot of improvements to uh, bring to this strategy but it's something that we would maybe look into in the next video trying to optimize things like the uh, take profit stop loss uh, ratios and the values maybe using the atr in this case or maybe using a uh, trailing stop loss uh, maybe changing other parameters like the um, lot size and so on 
So as you can see, there is a lot of parameters that we could change trying to optimize this strategy. It's going to be the topic of our next video just to keep this video as short as possible. Okay, so that's all I had to tell you for this video. I hope you guys liked it and found the information helpful. Until our next video, trade safe and see you next time.